This video is made possible by today's sponsor, Motion Elements. Have you ever found you've gotten to a point in one of your edits that you're just missing a certain clip or an element to really make it shine? Motion Elements has you covered with over 2 million stock items and unlimited downloads. They offer everything you need as a motion artist. One thing I really like are the 360 panoramas that you could use to create really interesting moving background plates or panoramic sky replacements. If you're an After Effects, Premiere, Final Cut or DaVinci user, then definitely check out Motion Elements via the link in the description below. Now, when it comes to filming this super slow motion effect, you're going to need a few different things. The first thing you're going to need is a camera and that can just be as simple as using your phone. The other thing you're going to need is either a blue screen or a green screen. Now the sheet itself can be anything. For my sheet, I'm just using this blue sort of material that I found in a local op shop. Or you could just use a bed sheet or something like that. Anything that just has a pretty strong blue color or a pretty strong green color. And something that again is different from the subject matter you're filming. The other thing you'll notice here is that when I set up my blue screen, I had really strong shadows running over the back of my screen. Now what I did is I simply moved this screen back and forth to basically remove those shadows out of the middle section, which is the part that I'm going to be using for the tennis ball. Now to hang the tennis ball, what I did was I took a tennis ball, I put a screw in the top and just tied a piece of string to an overhanging bar on the top, just to get a little bit of separation away from the screen so that it'll make it easier to twist that ball around and get that video. Now, once you've set up your green screen, you need to grab two separate shots. The first is I need a shot of the tennis ball spinning around really slowly to get that shot of the tennis ball rotating around. The other shot I've grabbed here is a wider shot of me throwing the ball up and down in the air. And that's just to get that wider shot so that we have something to freeze frame and then zoom the camera in. So over in After Effects, I've got three different clips laid out here. I've got my ball shot, which is this shot here. So the other shot I've got here is just a simple background shot. And what I did is I just set the tripod up and I just simply rotated the camera around, trying to do it all at the same sort of pace. And that's gonna be our background plate that we're going to blur. And the last shot I have here is me throwing the ball up and down in front of the blue screen. Now you can see there's a lot of motion blur and that's totally fine because we don't need any of that. We only want to take this section here of the video. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my background layer and I'm just going to drag it onto a new composition. So we have this here. I'm going to take my blue screen layer and layer that over the top. Now what I want to do here is basically draw a very quick mask, what we call a garbage mat, to go over that part that we're going to try and remove. So this section here, we just want to basically keep this part here of my hand throwing the ball up and down. Now I'm just going to turn off my background layer just to make this easier to see what we're doing. Now what I want to do with this clip is when it gets to a certain point, I want to freeze frame it. So as the ball gets to about here, what I want to do is I'm going to freeze frame that. I'm going to firstly right click, go to enable time remapping. Then I'm going to create a keyframe at that point. And what I want to do is right click on that and go toggle hold keyframe. And what that's going to do is create a freeze frame at that point. Another little tip here with the green screen is you can see there's all of these creases and shadows and so forth on the screen. And they actually don't really matter too much. You can get around those. And a simple trick to help get around those is create distance and throw the screen out of focus. So if you blur that screen, it'll help create more of a soft mat in the background to help get rid of that a lot easier. So what we want to do is come up to effect down to King and we want to add the key light. And I'm just gonna create a really quick key here by dragging up on the gain here until we get that completely gone. Once I've gotten that to roughly where I want it to be, then I'm going to switch over to my screen mat settings and I want to drag down on the clip white to bring back a little bit of that edge. And you can see we've got this little bit of an edge here. And a way to get around that is to either use this part here, which controls that little bit of an edge feather, 
Another way is to control the edge softness or the screen softness here to create a little bit of softness around that screen. Or you can even bring up or down these settings here, the clip white and clip black. So something that looks like this looks okay. Now the other part of this where the arm is, is okay, because we're going to extend that on by just using a general mask over the top of the original clip to build that back in later. So the next thing is we want to bring over the top our ball or that we shot on the green screen. So I'm gonna bring this over the top. So again, what we're gonna do is just copy those same settings from the key light across onto this ball, just to get a really quick rough mask of that ball. The other thing we can do is also come down here and just adjust a few of these settings. So I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a edge shrink drag up on this softness very slightly. And to get rid of this nail and this line that's hanging on the top, we want to basically just draw a really quick mask that goes along the top. So what I'm gonna do here is just draw a very quick mask that runs around the top. And I just want to subtract that mask. So that's gonna take it away from our video. And we just want to create some very quick mask path keyframes over the top, just so that we're keeping it roughly in that position over the top of that nail here. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. I can always go back through and readjust this. The other thing I'm going to do, if you need to slow this down, I can also come in here and add enable time remapping. And you could use that to slow this ball rotation down even more. Now, because that ball was rotating so slowly at the start when we originally filmed it, we can afford to slow it down quite a bit if we needed to. In this case, I'm just gonna leave that there. And I'm also just going to add a little bit of frame blending and just double click that to change it to be interpolation, which is just going to be a lot better and make it a lot smoother as it rotates around. Now, the next thing we want to do is basically line this ball up with our original ball here on that freeze frame. So I'm just gonna hit U to bring up that keyframe, line my playhead up there. Next, I want to take that tennis ball and shrink it down so it lines up over the top of our original tennis ball here from the original shot. So I'm trying to basically line this up so it sits roughly over that same sort of position. So something like that. I'm gonna create a position keyframe by hitting P on the keyboard, create a, a keyframe there. And I'm going to line it up maybe a little bit back here. So something like that, maybe scale this up very slightly. And what we want is we basically want to try and get rid of that ball in the background. And we want our tennis ball to basically, as it goes up, it's slowing down. So it's got a very slow movement and then drops back down. Now the next part is we want to remove that background tennis ball. So what I'm gonna do at this point, I'm gonna create another mask which runs around the outside of that ball. And if I just turn off this top tennis ball here, I want to subtract that tennis ball there. Now to turn this mask on and off, what we're going to do is just create two keyframes here. And I'm also going to create a mask path to basically animate that mask so that we remove that ball over our original footage. So it's there and then it kind of disappears. Now when we turn on our tennis ball that we put over the top, you can see it kind of picks up where that ball left off. Now we want to basically also bring this layer in here because we don't want it there in our original shot. We want it to kind of come in over the top so we kind of get that motion. Now I'm just gonna move along here on my timeline with these position keyframes because I want that motion to be really slow as it sort of comes up and then it's sort of coming back down. So we kind of get that really slow motion up, maybe in this direction, and then copy this keyframe back down here, and then just duplicate this keyframe here in the middle to make sure that it sort of goes up, stays in that position, and then pops back down. The other thing is because remember we created those time remapping, what I'm going to do is also drag this out to slow that rotation down of that tennis ball as it's moving up. Now I may have to go through, as you can see here, and readjust that mask to cover up that point there. So just go back through and readjust this mask. Maybe just move these ones over very slightly here so it's more up. 
And I can also make these three keyframes here easy ease to get a bit of that slow motion just to help soften out that movement. I'm also gonna extend out this clip. The other thing I want to do is now turn on our background layer. And the background, you can see we start getting that immediate pan of the camera and we don't want it to be like that. We want it to kind of stay still and then start panning as we're moving the camera in. So the way we do this, we basically create a time remapping for this. We create a time remapping point there. And what I'm going to do is duplicate that same keyframe. So I'm gonna copy that, move back one frame and paste it in there. So we have two keyframes that are same. And then I want to right click on that first keyframe and go toggle hold keyframe and then delete that first keyframe. So we essentially get a freeze frame and then it starts moving into that frame. Now we get a bit of a sudden jolt as it starts. So one way around that is to make this one easy ease out. And then I can just turn on the frame blending here just to help smooth out that whole animation. Just gonna drag out this point here so we end up with that arm. Now it disappears here, and that's okay. We're just gonna remove that keyframe there so we can basically keep that image on screen. And now we've pretty much got the movement of what we want. We now want the camera to sort of fly into that ball as it's slowing down and then do almost a matrix move as it's flying around the tennis ball. So to do this, what we're going to do is create a new camera which we're going to just put on top. Now this can be whatever you like, but generally I just use say a 35 millimeter, put that on top. And I need to make all of these layers 3D so that we can control them using that camera. Now I'm also going to create a little bit of separation here by dragging this background or moving it into my background and then just scaling it up. And then I want to basically start that camera move maybe around this two second mark. So what I'm gonna do is just come down to the transform options, hit a point of interest and a position keyframe. I'm going to select my camera tool or you can hit C on the keyboard. And then I basically wanna come along here and start to zoom into that tennis ball up the top here. Basically move backwards till we get that sort of in the position that we want. So we're kind of moving the camera into that tennis ball. I'm gonna make these ones both easy ease out, which will smooth them out into that motion. And you can make these ones just normal easy ease just to help soften out that movement. Now you can go through and adjust that camera however you need in order to get the best results, but you can see we pretty much have that effect. The other thing I did on my original comp was I added motion blur or a blur to the background. Now what I did is I selected my background, I came up to effect, down to blur and sharpen, and the one I added was the camera lens blur. Now what I did was I wanted the camera blur to sort of animate more as the camera's moving in. Now, if you think about it, as we're zooming the camera in, the background is gonna be more out of focus and we wanna try and replicate that. So what I do here is I create a camera lens blur right as that camera, if I bring up those keyframes by hitting U, I'm gonna create a basically a blur and you can blur the background as much as you like, probably going for around 10 here. And then as the camera's starting to zoom in and we get to this point, we really want to bring up that blur, maybe to something around there. I'm also gonna turn on repeat edge pixels just to help tidy up that edge there. And the other thing I did was also on the ball, I also add a little bit of motion blur or a bit of blur there to kind of make it sort of come into focus as the camera was moving in. So I added the camera lens blur and I just had a very slight amount of motion blur there. You gotta remember that it's coming out of very fast motion and then kind of coming into focus. So we need to replicate that. So I have a little bit there and as we're Coming in closer, we can kind of turn that off to bring it into focus. So we get a little bit of that sort of motion as the camera is kind of bringing it into frame. And you can see we pretty much have the finished effect. Now, if I come back to my original composition, two things that I did was I duplicated this layer here, which if I turn off all those effects was this layer here with the blue screen in the background. And I essentially just basically duplicated that layer and then I removed all of the masks over the top 
and then created a mask which ran over my arm here. You can see all of those keyframes that I created just to basically mask out my arm so it sits over the rest of the screen. Now there's multiple ways you can go through on rotoscoping and this is not gonna be a rotoscoping tutorial because I already have videos on how to do that, but you could use the roto brush if you needed to do that, or you could even use Mocha is another great option, or you could even use the track settings and draw a mask and then track it inside of After Effects. The final thing that I did was just add a color grade over the whole thing just to give it a finished effect. Now, the great thing about this is you can create so many different types of effects using this same technique. Now, other techniques I've seen is when I've seen people like Ben TK use it in travel videos where he's had, say, masked out a tennis ball or an object, and then he's basically had someone hitting that tennis ball and then he's animated it flying through the sky you'd use the exact same techniques as I've shown you here. The only difference is instead of using a 360 degree shot of your background, you'd just be putting together, say, a sky which is zoomed in and then animating it from left to right to show the ball sort of flying through the sky or something similar. So there you go, guys. That's how you create this effect. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more videos just like this over here on the side of screen. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.